The season's coming to a crescendo and I'm panicking. And let's be honest, you are too. If you're an Arsenal fan or a Liverpool fan, naturally, underneath the surface, you are panicking just a little bit because the results at the weekend, they're obviously going to be upsetting for, for you guys and for several teams out there in the Premier League. Up and down the country, when we get to this point of the season... Everyone's close. Everyone's close to what they want to achieve, be that good or bad. And it's scary. But what is the actual truth behind why this is happening when we're talking about Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham and Queen's Park Rangers as well? Yeah, that's right. Queen's Park Rangers. It's my channel. Feel free to vomit because I'd like to start with a quote from Hamlet because I think it's actually very pertinent to what we're going to be discussing in this video. There is nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it so. Yes, I've stolen that from a case study I was reading last night about this video, but it is very pertinent to the situation for several groups of fan bases who've had a, a recent wobble. And what this means is that the concept of good or bad only becomes one or the other, depending on how over-contextualized you make those things, often making them into something that they're not actually. These lines are very, very blurred. And in this video, we will hopefully explore that across all bases with every team that felt like they had a bad weekend. Now, a word that felt right for this video was panicking, but we're not going to leave it there because there's multiple reasons for the emotional unrest at several Premier League teams. And they're all different. Let's kick off with Liverpool. Liverpool fans, I hope you're okay. Please take a seat uh, in this video of therapy. Liverpool are... They're almost founded and forged on the emotion that they have on the pitch. It's what they believe is their, you know, USP. It's their outlier that allows them to achieve the things that they have. And the romance of that is important in allowing it to manifest itself. But also the emotion that trickles down from the stands to that group of players on the pitch. But there has been one factor which has changed the levels of emotion around the club, and that may have led to the problems of the last few weeks. Now, I want you to look at this graph because it says a lot about the current state of Liverpool, in my opinion. And actually, what's one thing to say is like these are all theories, right? And I think there's so many other things within it. But I think to reduce it a little bit allows us to create an open conversation that you guys can get involved in in the comments. And I would like you to do that, please. Whenever you're ready. I think this graph says a lot about the current state of Liverpool for me and where they have been in recent years. This is the inverted U hypothesis that relates to arousal levels and performance of athletes. Now, I know we've touched on this in the past, but there's something in particular when it comes to the moment that Liverpool are in right now. Now, for years, Liverpool have been operating at the apex of this curve because all of the factors had been in their favour. The biggest factor of them all, of course, Jurgen Klopp. And look, I know many of you have been thinking that Klopp's departure announcement has actually helped Liverpool reach a new summit in terms of performance on the pitch. And that is something that actually I believed would fuel them to greatness this season. And that's why I've picked them to go and win the league this year, which they could still do. Take a breath, people. It's a long way to go. But the thing to focus with this, if a team and a club that is already very emotional, is that Imagine how Liverpool fans, how you feel about Jurgen Klopp and how much you would like to deliver happiness to him as he leaves the club. The connection with the players, that group of players with Jurgen Klopp would be even more intense, especially when they're seeing and interacting and hugging and all those things with Jurgen Klopp on a daily basis basis. So when Jurgen Klopp announces that he's going to leave the club, that's in November and that will fuel the players understandably. But what is important here is that it's not May, it's not crunch time. And now we are in or certainly approaching crunch time. And that is a very, very different scenario. And the dynamics of those feelings and emotions inevitably will change and rise. It's now April and the pressure to deliver has a whole new dynamic to it. The emotion around the club and the fans has always been a good thing for the players. But now with Klopp's departure so imminent, it possibly feels like it's snuck on them a little bit. And I, I think the, the phrase I would use is they've tensed up. Or to put it more eloquently, they've started on the downwards trajectory of the inverted U due to one extra variable that previously was never there. Because they, well, the players, they know that this is their only shot at giving Klopp the second Premier League title that he's been chasing throughout these years and of course he talks about getting away from that and that that's the right thing to do but Liverpool have embodied the mantra of this means more for a long time but is it beginning to mean too much but also actually is there another factor at play which is the sole reason for all of this but before that we need to touch on Arsenal because of course they suffered defeat as well and whilst they're suffering from a similar sporting outcome to Liverpool their psychology 
is very different. Now I'm going to be as fair as possible when I say this next word because it's often a word that gets destructively thrown about and football's tribal so they're going to do that and so that's something that you know fans and players alike have got to deal with that's part of the journey to being elite and to being successful but there's a reason as to why we need to talk about this word you know what the word is say it with me bottle slash bottling now i'm not saying they're bottling i'm not because they're not like look at where they are this season look at what they've done but in a game by game basis there are these moments and obviously what we see in the future is going to be a big part of this but at the weekend it felt pertinent and what I will say is that the term Freudian slip is very, very applicable here. The term Freudian slip refers to an unintentional error regarded as revealing of subconscious feelings. So this is why the term bottling is so important here, because last season that was the case. The season before that, it was the case. And this season may not be the same. I don't think it will be the same. But what I will say is that these players remember last season and they have a point to prove that bottling it isn't a part of their identity. So therefore it is naturally within their subconscious at all times. It has to be. It's something that that this Arsenal group needs to push through. And in particular, I want to focus on the players here because I think for all of these examples, it's not about the managers, it's about the players. But what I thought was really interesting, and again, maybe a bit reductive, feel free to disagree with me in the comments down below. But when Liverpool lost their match, I think it presented Arsenal with, initially on the face of it, the perfect opportunity to create a gap and for the title to crucially remain in their hands. And the momentum bar, I think, is the perfect insight into the current minds of the Arsenal players or certainly on this very Sunday afternoon against Unai Emery, against Aston Villa, which is obviously a tough game in itself. So, you know, two things can be true. But this graph explains the situation perfectly. This is the catastrophe theory. Again, lots of theories here. Just we want to kind of enjoy and explore them, right? The, I'm probably not enjoy for some of you guys, right? The principles of this is that when maximum arousal and performance is reached, it falls off a cliff because it's not sustainable. Now let's have a look at the momentum bar and how it relates to that. So in the first half, Arsenal had comfortable control of the match apart from one shaky moment. But at halftime, with the score nil-nil, that's when we start to see the catastrophe theory come into play because it's at halftime where the what-ifs start to come into play and where the subconscious comes into play. And I think an important thing here as well is the fact that Arsenal have had an outlook and a confidence in 2024 but they've also played a lot of teams that they know they're better than and they've also been up early in a whole host of those games so that leads to a calming down and knowing of like control and control is a crucial word here but coming back to that idea that actually Liverpool losing was almost a bit of a problem because Man City had won and they'd set the standard and Liverpool had lost so yes there was opportunity but as time progressed that subconscious thought of, well, we've seen them lose, let's not do that, certainly stepped into the minds of not just the players, but again, the fan bases. Because I think the it is a partnership, the crowd, the energy of that crowd and the scars of the past a little bit. Let's talk about Tottenham because Ange is talking about focusing on the scoreboard, not their play. Ange speaks about how the play is affected by the scoreboard and how that can change the mentality and approach of a team. With the score nil-nil between Arsenal and Aston Villa and Arsenal in charge of the game, this could be a fair assessment of why they failed to knock it up a gear and why they got punished. In both games, the Liverpool and the Arsenal game, Klopp and Arteta said the right things afterwards in the fact that they both had the opportunities. And again, you know, if a finish goes into a corner instead of straight at the goalkeeper, these are very different games that we're talking about. But these things happen. There's one factor that we haven't spoken about. Manchester City and their ability to apply pressure. I was talking to my producer Kai about this and I was saying to him, it's a bit like a diving competition. And then the interesting, stay with me. The interesting thing here is that Man City, by them going first and performing their dive and there's no splash at all. You then think the other divers, Arsenal is a diver, Liverpool's a diver. Are you still with me? When they dive, they can't splash. They've got to be perfect. And that need to be perfect, that's intense. And this is the thing about Man City. 
because their team never gets their mentality questioned. You talk about mentality monsters, they are mentality monsters. There's a comfort, there's a flow, and their ability to tow the line of calmness and arousal perfectly. And the main outcome for all of this is that they indirectly put pressure on their opposition in title races. The fallout of this is that even when teams think they have a chance of winning the title, Manchester City are always there watching with steady momentum that never seems to go away. And when it gets to this stage of the season, Man City are in a, a really impressive mind frame. And it's one that the media perpetuates, I'm perpetuating right now, but there's credence for it because of previous seasons. And it comes down to this idea of threat state or challenge state. And in terms of the challenge state, for Pep, it's about we kind of know we're the best. Can we? I challenge you to be the best again. And actually, it's something that I think previously, and we do it every year, we kind of worry about the hunger of Man City. But then when they get to this point, the sort of threat of not being the best is not what Pep puts into to their minds. It's actually the challenge to go and do it the fourth time, to go and get 95 points, to go and win every game between now and the end of the season. From Man City's point of view, they see it as a challenge. They're excited. From Arsenal and Liverpool's point of view, understandably, at this moment in time, with what's happened over the last six years when it comes to Man City, they're getting dragged into a threat state. That steady momentum of Manchester City, it never goes away. And Arsenal know this all too well. And so do Liverpool. We did a video earlier in the season. And that was the thing that was sort of emanating from the, the fans of Liverpool and Man City that took part in that video. The Manchester City mentality stranglehold is a real thing at the moment. And it shows. They have created this environment where dropping points is considered the end of the world. And that's exactly what Pep and Man City want everyone to think. It's the new wave of mind games that they've been able to establish over the last few seasons due to their brilliance on the pitch, but brilliance in the top two inches of their body, otherwise known as their mind. Now let's talk about Spurs too, because their situation and circumstances changed drastically this week without even kicking a ball. Let me explain. With Man City, Arsenal, West Ham and Liverpool crucially, failing to get a win in Europe, it means that the chances of the fifth spot being a Champions League spot drastically decreased when prior it looked like it could happen. This means Spurs' mentality has gone from this being, it's 40% fine, we only need to finish fifth and we get ourselves in the Champions League. Happy day, successful season two. Oh no, it's only 10% fine now, we need to win games. But it did move the goal. <laughs> We're just going to move on from that? Yeah, we are. Which moved the goalposts for their match against Newcastle United, who they have past trauma if you think about last season and which is why they possibly failed to get a foothold in the game and couldn't really lay a glove on a Newcastle side that had a different formation and odd lineup as well. On the flip side to this you've got Aston Villa. Villa smelt blood this weekend and acted like a side that had just been given a large dose of adrenaline and focus. With Spurs doing the opposite of Man City and already having lost their game, it incentivised Aston Villa to go out there and get yourself a bloody win. And it's that freedom that's really important when we're thinking of a solution for any of these teams in terms of them wanting to achieve what they want to achieve this season. And it would be smart for them to take a leaf out of the new Masters Golf Champion. Yes, it's a different sport, but importantly, the message is crucial for the fan bases, but more important, the players for all of these teams. And so I can go out and compete freely knowing that I've done what I'm supposed to do in my preparation. That was, of course, Scotty Scheffler, who was the number one player in the world and went into the Masters and went and won it. That sounds like an obvious thing that happens all the time. It doesn't. It's happened for maybe five times in the history of the Masters. And whilst golf is a different sport, the arousal theories and psychology of athletes is still relevant. And it's so relevant to Aston Villa's win over Arsenal, but moving forward, so important when it comes to the mentality of every team who is fighting for something, be that QPR, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham, Leicester, Leeds, Ipswich. Feeling freely about what you're doing and focusing on the reality is crucial between now and the end of the season. Let's look at Liverpool versus Palace because the reality is Liverpool should have won that game. You know, outside of the ball being in the net, Liverpool were utterly, overly dominant defensively. Can they be better? Yes, of course. You know, players falling over is not ideal, but again, it's something that happens and slow to get to the ball at times. You've got that 26-pass sequence for the goal. That's not ideal, but... Trent was back when Trent stepped in. I think Klopp said it himself. It provided a new security, a new uh, improvement to the structure. And another thing that Klopp said is like, look, they're human. You know, these things are going to happen. It is a low scoring, high variable game. I've said it a million times. There's only three points up for grabs. So when it comes to the solution, the solution of all of this, 
and how their teams abandon their emotional instabilities comes again back to this Hamlet quote, which has followed the video throughout. That's right, we're milking it. And it's time that we lift the lid on it so that we don't have to use this Hamlet quote again. But more importantly, that we can all kind of learn something from this moment because it's interesting to zoom in, isn't it? I think so anyway. So thinking of the worst often brings the worst, but the worst possible outcome often comes from your own mind and you subconsciously manifesting it into life by simply thinking about it and allowing it to come to life. Narrative is such a huge part of the sport you know everything's a story and you want it to be a story that's part of the fun from from us in terms of the outlook because we're not in the inner sanctum for those players within the dressing room they need to strip back the narrative and get back to the process to bring it to my team for a second my team qpr looked like they were safe they are now in a position where it's looking like they might not be safe and we're all panicking all the fans are panicking fortunately we have a manager in marty Stifuentes who is so good at talking. And what he does is he brings it back to what it needs to come back to. Stripping back the narrative and getting back to reality. He says it in his post-match interview, which thank God it, I had that because I needed that. Because everyone, you're panicking. You're constantly panicking. I'm not going to get what I wanted. I'm not going to get what I've hoped for all season long. And Marty Sifuentes said for QPR, who were right in the doldrums and have now got to the point where we're kind of one win away. He said that, look, we lost to a, a good team who've got some good players. Fabio Car Carvalho playing for Hull City. We need to get back to the reality of the situation and so to overcome this panic and I think we are seeing a little bit we need to come back to reality you need to strip back the narrative and have to remove yourself from the outer situation by focusing on the inner situation for example if you're Arsenal forget about Man City if you're Liverpool forget about Man City and don't think about Klopp leaving Think about winning your games. Think about focusing on the chances you're creating and thinking about having that little bit more composure once you get those chances. Again, all easier said than done. By getting rid of the narrative, it takes away its power and it allows you to focus on the task in front of you rather than everything around you. It feels backward because obviously you need points to go and win. But when it comes to these games, you know, Man City are in a very strong mental space. But they are 20 minutes, let's say 45 minutes. Actually, they're one second from things changing because game state is so crucial when it comes to the running. There will be twists and turns and there are only three points up for grabs every single week. Can Man City be perfect? Of course they can. They've done it before and they've focused on control more than anything else. But in a team that controls most games that they play, that is exactly what they need to do. Focus on what they can control because if they don't and a goal goes in and then all of a sudden they've drawn a game, then it is all in the lap of the gods again. I think there could be a few more twists and turns between now and the end of the season. But what will be important is Liverpool and Arsenal, Spurs, QPR, Leicester, all these teams focusing on what they can control. And the fact that Man City have gone and won the league already, I'd say this phrase to you. One must beware hubris. That's it, QPR, please win this week. <laughs>